What we're going to be looking at here are liquidity ratios and we're going to be looking at the current ratio here in the acid test or quick ratio. So starting with our current ratio, that measures the short term ability of a company to meet its current maturing obligations here. Again, the ability of the company to convert its assets into cash here. So again, our equation here in a current ratio is a current assets here divided by our current liabilities. So our current assets would be like our cash here plus our short term investments plus our inventory here plus our net receivables here. So that takes care, we would, wouldn't include any allowance. Allowances would be removed here from our receivables. And then we divide that here by our current liability. So we got to know what our current assets are here and we have to know what our current liabilities the division here gives us our current ratio. So what does this current ratio here represent here? So let's first, what does it mean here? So if a business here or firm has 200,000 here in current assets and 100,000 here in current liabilities, the calculation is simply our 200,000 current assets here divided by 100,000 in current liabilities and that's going to give us a current ratio here of 2.00 here. So I'm showing this little x here. So okay we got our current ratio of 2.00 so what does that mean here now the x times uh, here is part uh, part at the end here is important it means that the firm can pay its current liabilities from its current assets at two times over here so it has current assets that are worth more than its current liability. So they could pay off their current liabilities here two times over. Now if the current ratio was say less than one times here, then the firm would have a problem meeting its bills here. So usually a higher current ratio here is better than a lower current ratio with regard to maintaining liquidity. So let's look at our calculations here and how we could uh, better, how we can see how this works here. So we have 200,000 here in current assets, 100,000 current liabilities. The deficient again gives us the current ratio here of 2.00. So let's look at how we could improve this current ratio here by reducing both the current assets and the current liabilities by the same amount here. So let's say for example we're going to pay off uh, $10,000 in notes payable here which is our current liability here and we're going to pay it off with a current asset here of cash of ten thousand dollars so just going and looking at our ratio here so we got this current assets of two hundred thousand we're going to reduce it reduce the cash by ten thousand here in our current assets so that's going to give us our total current our assets reduced by ten thousand hundred ninety thousand dollars here and our current liabilities we have a hundred thousand here and we're going to reduce our notes payable uh, current liability is going to be paid off with that cash here. So we're going to have current liabilities here of $190,000. So current assets were our current assets were reduced by the $10,000 in amount of cash that we're paying off on our notes payable and our current liabilities are reduced here by $10,000 because we no longer have that notes payable. It was paid off in the cash. So simple division here gives us a new current ratio of 2.11. So our, our current ratio here at 2.0 has been increased here to 2.11 so it's really better here so we've got a better current ratio here. So again you improve the current ratio by reducing current assets and current liabilities here at the same amount. Now this assumes that your current assets here are greater than your current liabilities here. Okay now let's look at the case here where we, we could weaken our current ratio by reducing the current assets or increasing our current liabilities. Same uh, amount here, 200,000 in current assets, 100,000 in current liabilities, 2.0 current ratio. So let's say for example here we're going to reduce our current assets by 10,000 here, but our current liabilities remain the same here in our example. So simple division is going to give us our new current ratio here 1.90 here so we reduced our current assets here but our current liabilities remain the same here so we reduced our current ratio here weakened our current ratio it's not as good uh, by doing that here by reducing our current assets and current liabilities remaining the same. Now the other case here is again a simple arithmetic here. Uh, current assets remain the same here at $200,000 but our current liabilities actually increase. So you see here the case here where we're, by increasing our current liabilities here we're going to come up with again a current ratio here of 1.82. So uh, current ratio again was weakened. It's not as good here by adding to our current liabilities here and then our current assets stayed the same. So uh, this is just just a point out here how this current ratio would be used here. So again, we've weakened our current ratio here by either reducing our current assets or 
increasing our current liabilities. Okay, now let's go up here and look at um, uh, changing this current ratio here. So a satisfactory current ratio does not disclose that a portion here of our current, a uh, current assets that may be tied up in slow moving inventory. So our current assets could have these inventories that are sitting in it and they're slow moving. It's hard to turn them over sometimes here. So and those would be like our raw materials or our work in process here. So the question is how long will it take to transform our inventories here into finished products here that are sold either as accounts receivable or uh, or receiving cash for them here. So what we have to do is we uh, we want to take a look at getting rid of these inventories here or not including them in our formula here for our current, ra our current ratio which is going to change it into what we call the asset test ratio. So we would be eliminating our inventories and say prepaid expenses from the amount of our current assets here and it provides a uh, better information for short-term creditors here on how they can get their monies quicker here. So sometimes our, uh, if they can actually recover their monies here because these inventories are slow moving and you may not have the cash here to pay your creditors. So therefore we're going to use this acid test ratio here which excludes the inventory here. So again for our same as our uh, current ratio here we have our cash plus our short-term investments but here we're going to remove the inventory. The inventory is not included in this acid test ratio but then we would uh, but we would include our net receivables here. So divide those into our, our divide our current liabilities into this cash short-term investments and don't include your inventories and but include your uh, accounts receivable here or your net receivables that's going to be our asset test ratio here or what they call the quick ratio here so again our acid test ratio here uh, that's a measure of the company's ability to meet its short-term obligation using its most liquid assets. Now a higher acid test ratio indicates a greater short-term liquidity here for the company and an acid test eliminates assets that might be slow moving such as our inventory. So again our equation here for our acid test ratio or a quick ratio again just our cash plus our short-term investments plus our net receivables here divided by our current liabilities here. So we've looked at both this uh, current ratio here and also this acid test ratio. So the acid test ratio is what the quick ratio would what we call this quick ratio and that's where we remove our inventory here when we're calculating our this removing our inventory here from our current assets when we're determining this acid test ratio. Okay so that covers both of these uh, liquidity ratios here both the current ratio here and our acid test or our quick ratio.